you know, at the end of the day, the, the, the most powerful tool a broker has is their knowledge. And every broker's first priority should be focused on building encyclopedic knowledge of their market. And you do that by the prospecting process. Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Academy podcast, the podcast dedicated to simplifying the commercial real estate industry for the masses. Each week, we sit down with industry experts to dissect the many facets of commercial real estate and extract valuable lessons you can apply to your business. Whether you're a new or seasoned business owner or investor, the Commercial Real Estate Academy podcast will be your go-to resource for all your commercial real estate needs. Now, here are your hosts, Rafael Collazo and Jeff Walston. Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Academy podcast. I'm your host, Rafa Coyasso, here with my co-host, Jeff Walston. How's it going, my friend? It's going well. Uh, projects and business is going well, and uh, can't really complain. Excited. Planning on my uh, daughter's uh, birthday coming up, so that's a that's a big deal. It's a 11, and man, I'll tell you, that I remember my 11th birthday, and it was not a, such a big deal, but uh, yeah, it's uh, turning into a whole event. So what about you, Raphael? How's it going over there? Going great. I'm sure. I mean, she's, she seems to be growing so fast, so I'm sure you're, you know, you're excited to celebrate with her and, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing about the the event uh, as it takes place, but everything's going well on my end, you know, a lot of leasing activity as of late, you know, with interest rates where they're at right now, the investment landscape has been kind of iffy, but I mean, I'm, I, I do a lot on the retail side and it's been super active. Um, and so yeah. very blessed to say that. And, you know, luckily we, we have the opportunity today to talk to someone that, I got to know a little bit through, you know, coaching program I did with the Massimo Group. Uh, James Bean, uh, he was a coach with the Massimo Group, and he he provided a ton of value. And luckily, we have the opportunity to speak with him today and uh, learn a little bit more about himself. So, James, welcome. Yes, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So, so as far as the structure for the the the, the way we ha- handle these, typically, James, is we we like to learn a little bit more about the the person who's across the table from us when we first get started with these interviews. So if you don't mind kind of sharing your backstory, I think that'd be awesome. Great. And again, thank you for being uh, the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So um, pretty simple story, pretty similar story to a lot of people. Um, Commercial real estate was actually my second career. Um, I am Ventura County, California native, but uh, moved to Phoenix after I got out of the service in the early 80s and ended up getting my degree in visual communication, spent 15 years as a graphic designer. And in 2000, um, went and got licensed. Um, There's some mid story there that we don't need to get into because it involves a marriage and a failed marriage, but we don't need to bring that into the mix. so I started as an industrial leasing user sales broker in Phoenix with a boutique firm called Cutler Commercial. They're still around. They, they opened up in 1981. Uh, they're a driving force in Phoenix for the size that they are. They control probably 6 million square feet of industrial square footage in the Metro Phoenix market. And spent 15 years there doing uh mostly leasing and user sales that first 10 years and then in 2010 started focusing more on investment sales and um in 2013 i decided i was going to move home just didn't know how it was going to look or work or whatever and summer of 2014 i ended up getting recruited by marcus and millichap to open a brand new office in ventura uh, and I ended up moving back home in March of 2015, spent three years with Marcus and Millichap, and then joined um, SVN, Rich Investment Real Estate Partners, in August of 2018, and have been there ever since. That's amazing. No, and yeah. and and it's interesting you say the, 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 the second career piece, because I feel like for a lot of people, that is the case. I know it was for me. You know, I I had previously been in the engineering space and then got into the brokerage side of things about three and a half years ago. And, you know, there definitely are people that get into it, you know, right out of college. And there's other people that have family in the business and it just kind of is a natural progression. But, 
you know, it just goes to show that, you know, there's not one size fits all for people that want to get into the space. Um, and I'm sure you applied a lot of the lessons you learned from your prior career to then moving into the, the brokerage space. Yes, I have, uh, the marketing advertising career, obviously plays a big role in how we put together marketing materials. And now, you know, the way social media is done and all of those things. So yeah, I'm very grateful for the path that uh, I've been on and the path that led me to where I'm at today. Um, looking back over the, the only thing I would change is I uh, wish I would have been a little more interested in commercial real estate earlier in life and <laughs> gotten started earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, and, there, there, and there's always 2020 hindsight, but you know, I'm, I'm yeah. sure that, you know, you, you, I mean, the fact that you've been able to do what you have so far and, you know, the fact you're contributing to so many brokers lives through your coaching efforts is, I mean, it's, it's a great, uh, great thing. So. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. The, so I, I still maintain a full-time brokerage, which we'll get into, uh, but I did start coaching with, with the Mossimo Group in, in 2016, um, and, and I'm still with them. I am the senior new to business and group coach, as well as, as one of the elite coach. I was coach of the year in 2020, which is, to me, is kind of extra special because they call me the COVID coach. Mm -hmm. uh, um so that was kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity to give back to the community that has treated me so well. And, you know, I've just, I've got my own little nuggets of wisdom and whatever I can share with brokers, just getting into the business and helping them fine tune their business. It's uh, a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. Was, was there any thought into getting into like residential real estate or like what, what happened that like really pushed you to commercial? Um, so the answer to the first question is no, there was never any thought. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I was very fortunate that two of my best friends on the planet, uh, in, to this day, in fact, um, in fact, I'll be with them, uh, next weekend in Vegas for March madness. Um, nice. The guys that work at Cutler Commercial, they're both still there. Um, that's what got me my in. It really was very helpful on many fronts because I didn't have to put in um, the blood, sweat, and tears that a lot of brokers have to do those first two, three years because I had kind of an in. I already knew the broker. In fact, uh, the broker and their family had done business with me in my design career. I'd done a lot of printing for them. I'd even designed their logo for them. So it was a very smooth transition, even though I didn't know anything about industrial real estate when I started. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. And, 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 and I feel like with the commercial industry over the residential industry, it, it is much more about who you, who, you know, to actually get into it. Cause I, I know with residential, I mean, you kind of can hang your shingle wherever you'd like, but you know, I, even, even, you know, if, even if you have, any background in it. Like if you studied it, even in college, unless you know someone who operates a brokerage or you, you know, you have a friend who happens to have another friend in the industry, it, it's can get a little bit, it can be a little bit difficult to, to break in. So it's always good to have those relationships when you want to break into the business. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, I know for sure. So, so one thing I'm kind of curious about is, you know, obviously you'd, you'd alluded to the fact that, you know, you do work with new to business uh, agents and brokers, um, you, you, you alluded to yourself that the first few years are, can be a, t a tough go at it, especially, you know, if you don't have, you know, the, the, the same, the level of support that is kid could, can definitely accelerate your career, but maybe talk a little bit about, you know, maybe from the coaching perspective, like what do you see people most struggle with when they first get in the business? Well, probably for those guys, you know, you're, people that get into brokerage and don't have, like you said, don't have a support system. You know, if you're thinking about getting into commercial real estate, you should look very seriously about um, the firm you're going to go work for and the kind of support you're going to get. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, brokerage is sales and sales is not for everybody. So the good news is, is that salesmanship can be taught um, 
but it is important that you have that um, support, have access to a mentor, somebody, a senior broker that would take you under their wing. Um, but outside of that, if, even if they have all of that going for them, the common thread that I see new brokers having a problem with is uh, consistent prospecting efforts. That makes sense. No, I mean, and, and you're right. And I think part of the reason for that is that, you know, it, it's almost like a, it, and you know, I, this is when I first started, I, I, I felt this way is that I, it was more of like a spray and pray approach at, at times when I, you know, cause you know, no one really at my brokerage had the, the, the experience of, of consistent prospecting and, and cold calling, getting out there. And so what I found myself doing oftentimes was to just download a list of all these different contacts and then just go down the line and just say, Hey, do you want to buy or sell? Hey, do you want to buy or sell? Hey, do you want to buy or sell? And you know, I, I didn't, I wasn't making much headway. And so I felt very, you know, I, I get very down on myself as a result of that. And, you know, that's definitely not the proper way to do it. And so, you know, I think when I, when I'd gone through the process with you guys through the the new to business program, you know, I know that it, it become you, you, you define, you, 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 you try to refine those efforts uh, over time because it is, it is a skill you can develop if you do stick to it. Absolutely. Yeah. James, I'm kind of curious. Um, I like uh, if you have built any systems or processes or anything uh, to help you implement within your business uh, for like long-term success uh, within the commercial sector. Um, can you give me an example? I'm not sure I understand the question. Sure. So, yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jeff. No, 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 I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. No, I, I was just going to say um, one of the examples, like, uh, is there like when you approach someone to, to do a deal, do you have an implementation, like a, a list of anything that you go through with them? Or um, when you are out prospecting, um, what do you tell some of your uh, um, students to help them? Uh, with uh, you know, possibly planting the seed and, and watching it grow. Is there anything, anything like that? Oh, that you well, you know, there's this kind of a multi pronged question there. So yeah, um, you know, first and foremost is that you, you've got to have control of your week. You've got to set up your week to make sure that you give yourself, you know, enough time to maintain your pipeline work on your current transactions but you also need to have that appointment set with yourself to consistently do business development through prospecting and you know i could spend a whole hour talking about just prospecting alone um but it's something that you know at the end of the day the the, the most powerful tool a broker has is their knowledge and every broker's first priority should be focused on building encyclopedic knowledge of their market. And you do that by the pro the prospecting process, you know, uh, calling people, getting to know them, building, you know, gaining data points on, you know, if you're calling tenants, what their address is, how much time they have on the lease, how much space they're using, how many employees they have, uh, if you're talking to owner users, um, getting into the nitty gritty of their business, how long they've owned their building, do they see themselves expanding? Uh, if you're calling landlords, then uh, talking to them about their the marketing efforts that they're currently using, to, um, which is obviously hiring a broker. And what is the current marketing team doing to keep tenants coming in and maintaining the property and keeping the property full. Uh, if you're calling investors like myself, um, you know, I'm just making sure that I'm staying in touch with them and providing them valuable information about what's happening in the market year to year and what are their future plans. And if their plans are to dispose, how do we go about disposing and um, making sure that we preserve as much as their equity as possible through a 1031 exchange once the disposal of their down leg is complete 100 percent. yeah and 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 tracking this data you know i guess you're, you you advocate using a crm 
you know, and, and I know Massimo, no Massimo, yeah, Massimo had, had a, uh, you know, a, a tracker for a variety of different things. You know, I, I, I use a separate CRM to be able to house this information as well, because, you know, you can have, your brain can only hold so much and you're, you're, I'm sure going to forget after you have a conversation with someone a couple months, a couple weeks ago or a month ago or whenever else, it's going to be hard to recall exact the nitty gritty details of the, the, the information. Whereas if you have something in your CRM that you can refer to and you can reference something you mentioned, you know, a month ago or a couple weeks ago, I mean, that's how you're, you know, keep up to date with everything and make sure that, you know, whoever you're talking to, you know, you're able to continue building that rapport. So. Yeah, CRM is an absolute must. Um, and it amazes me. I just had a broker that I talked to that their entire shop does not use this CRM. No one in their office uses a CRM. They're all on Excel spreadsheets, which wow. I have no idea how that is even possible. Uh, I can certainly share with you that, you know, back in 2000, when I started my, my career, the only really CRMs that were out there was ACT and, and REA. And REA was a very robust and it's it's evolved since then to like real next. And I think they have even since been bought. But the bottom line is, is that there is so much technology to make this job and industry very simple uh, compared to the way it was 20, 25 years ago and, and more. So you need to, implement technology in a way that it's going to help you be highly efficient and highly productive in your business. And so to the point that Raphael just made is that, yeah, when you're having conversations with people, you need to remember those conversations because is I can share with you several stories of people that I stayed in touch with for four five, six years before I did business with them. Yeah. Yeah. And I can only Absolutely. imagine and you can ref and if you're able to refer back to you know conversations you had i mean and 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 showcase you know whatever whatever important items there are for that individual it just again it helps build that connection which is what we're trying to do over time and if you're trying to break in and, and establish a relationship with someone who ultimately will do business with you and they're you know a high profile individual you know all you need is that one shot and it may take you you know, like you said five, 5 or 6 years i mean that's that's quite a bit of time to yeah. be well, talking to someone uh, oh I'll tell you, sales industry standard, this is not commercial real estate specific. Sales, people who use the telephone to prospect for sales. So there's a number of industries that do that. Uh, so through sales statistics, 80% um, of sales happen between the fifth and 12th contact. You know, there's several authors out there that have focused on that. Brian Tracy, for instance, has his the Ask Five Times Theory. Because if you're giving up after three no's, you're probably only really giving yourself a shot at about 30% of the population. Because 70% of the population needs to be touched at least five times, if not seven to 12 times, before they'll make a buying decision. So in our world, that five to 12 contacts is when they will finally decide to hire, hire you for the assignment, whether to be their buyer broker, listing broker, tenant broker, whatever. Yeah. That makes complete that makes complete sense. And 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 I think that, you know, again, this is a, a sales role. And so I that that's something that I had to learn about myself. I, I didn't come from a sales background. And so it is a skill that you have to refine over time. And uh, you know, obviously that's that's some great advice you shared on that front. So one thing I'm kind of curious about, and and you know, obviously you alluded to it through, you know, your the in your involvement with the Massimo group is coaching. You know, I I'm I'm a big proponent for coaching. I've had coaches throughout my life for a variety of different things. Uh, you know, I, I have gone through the the new to business program with the Massimo group as well. Um, what, what type of impact has coaching had on your life? Um, that, that'd be kind of curious. Uh, well, you know, I'm a big sports nut. Mm -hmm. I, I like, uh, you know, football, basketball, baseball, and, big time golf enthusiast and you know you can't take anything you do to the next level without a coach pure and simple um you know tiger woods has had multiple swing coaches 
Um, you go to baseball, they've got your trainers, they've got your swing coaches, they got the pitching coaches. Um, look at the staff they have on football teams. So coaching is a must. Um, if you want to become the best of the best at what you do, regardless of what you do, you know, people that are gym rats, they hire personal trainers. It's the evidence is all out there that how important coaching is. And the, the difference that coaching has made in my life, you know, th there weren't coaching programs when I started my real estate career, but I had mentors, you know, and I wanted to be a top producer. And one of my sales coaches that I had told me, they say, look, if you want to be a top producer, do what the top producers do. Because top producers do the stuff that no one else wants to do. So if you find the common threads that top producers do, you will become a top producer. That's awesome. Yeah, success leaves clues, as they say. That's right. I'm kind of curious on your whole approach uh, of your coaching process towards like the younger agents. Um, could you like maybe give a scenario of one instance of how you maybe helped a younger agent? Uh, well, that part is really simple. You know, the Mossimo Group provides the platform and the content. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, everybody's a little different. And so it just comes down to uh, doing the work, implementing processes. That works. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Follow, following that specific type of process where, you know, you talk about the time blocking, you talk about, you know, the prospecting, you talk about, you know, researching, you know, that was a big part of, outside of the, 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 the eight to five. You take time to research your market and and update your CRM and database to make sure that you know you're 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 an expert so that when you have conversations with owners or lease uh, to tenants or whoever else you're you're educated about the market and can provide unique value. Um, right, and that's iterative. That takes time, and you know uh, if you t follow that process over a period, then it, it then magic begins to happen. So, yeah, you know and. I appreciate you guys talking to me about the coaching, you know, but that's only, that's not even 20% of my business. That's kind yeah. of a side hustle for me. Sure. No. And that makes sense. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of dive into more on the investment sales side, because, you know, obviously that's your primary focus. Um, and, you know, I'm kind of curious about how you see the current environment, uh, how, what, what you see in the current environment, obviously for, as, as we're recording this, We've had some shifting uh, economic uh, systems going going on. I mean, obviously, interest rates have begun to began to spike a little bit. Uh, although the job numbers look great and there's the economy is still doing very well, you know, there is some some concerns regarding what the future holds. So, how have you been managing this particular environment such that you're able to best serve your clients? Well, you know, fortunately for the in the investment world. Uh, nothing has really shifted to where it's moving the needle, so to speak. Um, I think velocity has definitely slowed down a little bit. Um, there's people that, you know, are kind of in a uh, wait and see period. Um, there is still a tremendous amount of velocity you know, especially in the single tenant net lease world which is where i reside and um i think that that's just something that you know um until something really shifts um the interest rates has caused that a little bit um i think because it's just been over the last six months where the interest rates have really moved that it really hasn't had the effect yet. I think it's coming. And that is especially around expiring debt. Uh, you know, people that put 10 year money on their projects in 2014 are probably starting to squirm and sweat a little bit. Um, or even people that are needing to, they have expiring debt this year. Um, so, I think that coupled with the fact that 
until we're completely done, clear, and complete with talking about the pandemic and all the um, moratoriums go away and the free money go away and when the free money dries up and reality sets in that here we are and here's what it all looks like, then I think that's when things are going to really, you're, you're going to really start to see movement. Uh, what kind of movement? I don't really, can't really say other than, um, you know, a downturn is coming for those of you, you know, people that think that they still talk about whether or not a recession is coming. I got news for you. The recession is here. It's been mm -hmm. here. Uh, there's plenty of evidence to back that up. So, um, all the more reason that, you know, for the brokers that have been in the business more than 20 years, this is not our first rodeo about a, a market that's about to shift. So at the end of the day, you have to maintain your processes, maintain staying in contact with your people, with your prospects, with your clients, being a valuable resource to those people by staying plugged in to what's happening around you and your market. 100%. No, I couldn't agree more. And 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 obviously, you know, I, I feel like, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, I don't operate too much in the single tenant in that lease space. Um, have you seen, is, is it primarily, I guess, do you deal a lot with investors that, that do put debt on, on the properties or are some investors, you know, not even subject to, you know, financing? And I guess, how does, yeah, that, the how people, does that work? Most of the clients that I work with, um, as I have shifted my focus to representing exchange buyers, uh, fortunately, a lot of my exchange buyers are not having to put debt. They're coming out of their exchange. They're looking to just place all cash. Um, you know, up until last year, there were a lot of people taking advantage of cheap money and doing some great leverage. Uh, unfortunately, Leverage, I think, is off the table right now because it just doesn't make sense unless, um, you know, there are deals out there. Uh, it really probably depends on the sophistication of the investor. But, um, you know, for anybody that's got a place that, you know, the, the word on the street right now is, you know what, marry the property and date the rate. Yeah. No, I, I could agree more. And 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 again, you know, obviously they they've they they're proposing that the, the sentiment seems to be that they're they're going to continue to raise rates slightly over the next probably couple quarters. Um, but at some point it will it will come down. I mean, you know, maybe in 2024, 2025, we'll start seeing a mellowing out. And at that point, like you said, you'll start seeing debt maturing to a point where there's going to probably going to be a lot of product coming to market from distressed, you know, assets that, you know, they just weren't they they. They overextended in the good times and, you know, properties do like that do come to market and there will likely be price adjustments as a result. You know, there'll be more inventory, less buyers in, in the market and therefore adjustments will occur. I mean, it's an ebb and flow. It's it's economic, you know, theory 101. So hopefully, you know, come 2024, 2025, um, you'll start seeing, you know, more opportunities in the marketplace to capitalize on those those types of assets. I don't, I don't know if that it'll happen that fast or not. Um, I mean, the, the, the camp that I surround myself with think that, you know, money's probably going to get to 7% by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And it's probably going to hang around six or 7% for a couple of years. Um, and when you think about it, when you go back and you look over the last uh, 20, 30 years, the healthy markets where there's been healthy, sustainable growth is that's where money's been at in that five to seven yeah. percent range. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, back in I, I so I my I was a military brat, and and my dad we were stationed over in Europe, and we moved back. To, we moved to the U.S. when I was fourteen. And my parents bought a house in two thousand five, I believe, and their interest rate was like six percent, something like that, six and change. Yeah. Yeah, my parents right. bought a house in the '80s, and their interest rate was seventeen percent. Mm. Yeah, it's like yeah. A, it's, it's like a credit card. I yeah, we hear people <laughs> we hear people talk about it, and they're like, "Try starting in in real estate when the interest rate's seventeen percent." Like, oh. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Can, I can only imagine. People get too uh, 
you know, Americans get spoiled really easy, you know. Mm -hmm. And so when money was so cheap for so long coming out of the Great Recession, um, you know, that was the time that people should have been leveraging to the hilt because money was so cheap. And the, the people that did that and did it smartly are going to win and make fortunes. Um, the good news is, is that throughout my career, I have a lot of clients that have made a lot of money with uh, property, you know, acquiring property where interest rates were north of 7%. Sure. Yeah, I mean, because they've been in the game so long, I'm sure. And, you know, they've seen all the different ebbs and flows. And really, if you if you take out, like you said, if you take out the anomaly that is like 2000, maybe 10, 11 to 2021 or 22, I mean, that's an anomaly in history. You know, the the the, four, the fours, fives, three percents. I mean, I on my house, I got a two percent, two and a two and two and two point five percent interest rate. I know people who've gotten hovering low twos for their for their interest rate. I mean, that's that's less than inflation. So like literally that money is free. You know, you're Pretty paying much. back. You're, you're, you're literally getting free money to buy these these properties. And so that's where I think, you know, the opportunity lies going forward, because I mean, I can't tell you. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it in, 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 in the digital space where, I mean, everyone and their mom was was creating syndications to buy these primarily in multifamily. That's that's where I think there could be a bubble. Um, just because I feel like there's so many people out there that were buying these properties at increasing rates. And, you know, a lot of it is on relatively short term debt. I mean, three to five years, maybe you mentioned 10 years. That's not I mean, if they went Fannie Mae, Freddie, maybe. But for mm -hmm. the most part, you got you got a very short period of time where they can either, you know, sell or refinance or whatever else. But I don't know. I'm, I'm interested to see how that all plays out over the next few years. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It is. Yeah, well, fun for some, but it's not fun <laughs> for others. Well, no. I, I think the mistakes that they made will come and they're going to learn a hard lesson. And, you know, maybe they'll eight that will help them uh, eight in the next up and downturn. So, yeah, I mean, I went and, through the two, 2008 one. So, I mean, I, I learned quite a few lessons there. So I've kind of a little bit more prepared than a lot of people. Mm hmm. That no, younger, sure. So absolutely. No, but no, it, it's going to be an interesting thing. To, it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out of, over the next few years. But uh, one th one of the questions I actually had for you was related to. So Jeff and I are both voracious readers. Uh, we like to continually find ways to improve ourselves in a variety of different ways. And, you know, we read a variety of different types of books. And, and I was just kind of curious, do you have a book in particular that you found to be kind of the most impactful book in your life? And obviously it doesn't have to be commercial real estate related that my the most impactful book in my life was not it was it was a book called the compound effect um that kind of talked yeah. about the darren the, hardy darren hardy yeah that was the that, that one when i read that back when i was 23 that was a light bulb in my head it's like oh wait like all you have to do is just be consistent every day and just do the same thing over and over and over and over and then things compound so that was my kind of aha moment and that's i've taken that with me my whole life but i don't know if you have any particular book that was that impactful uh, for you yeah i have several actually i'm a voracious reader myself um i read at least two books a month that's awesome um but i would say probably the two most impactful books to this point uh they're both books that i've read multiple times is first and foremost think and grow rich and secondly the seven uh, habits of highly effective people. Some Stephen Covey, uh, Dale Carnegie's book, How to in Win Friends and Influence People, is another pretty impactful. Yeah, book. you read those three books, you you'll be off to a pretty good start. Absolutely, I, I mean, agree. Eat that frog's another one. Eat oh, that yeah. frog. Yeah, yeah all Bri a lot of Brian T Tracy's books are excellent. I mean, I've read several yeah. of his books. Yeah. Brian's one of my favorites. Definitely. No. And, and, and the, uh, you know, uh, thinking you grow rich, I think, I think anything in life, regardless of what career you're in, starts in the mind. So I think creating that cultivating a, a mind, mind of positivity and abundance and, you know, focusing on, you know, what you can do on a day to day to be successful. I mean, that that's translates regardless of what career you're in, uh, but it's just, I, I, especially in sales and brokerage, because it, it, it can get very, it's a roller coaster sometimes. So, being yeah, able to there's make another sure. 
book that I just recently read at the end of last year, last fall, that's uh, been also very impactful. Um, and it's a simple read. You can literally read it in one setting. Uh, it's called The Go-Giver. Mm. Oh, yeah. One, uh, 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 Jeremy Neuer is a, is a broker out of uh, New Jersey. Uh, we interviewed yep. a while back. He actually sent us a copy of The Go-Giver because he said that was the best book that he, he just sends to people. So yeah, you got a yeah, chance to read it. Yeah, you can probably, you know, it's probably not even ten dollars, and you could probably mm-hmm. buy them in bulk. But yeah, that's a a great gift idea because, you know, it's um, it's got a lot of parallels to Think and Grow Rich. Um, you know, they list they talk about the 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 five stratospheric steps to success or five rules to stratospheric success. Um, but another great book, um, Brandon Bouchard's got a couple of good books, high performance habits. Yeah. Another good one. That's if great. you want to get into sales, there's all kinds of great sales books. Um, one of my favorite sales books is the sales Bible by Jeffrey Gittimer. Um, Jeb Blunt. He's got a couple of great books, uh, Fanatical Prospecting, Overcoming Objections, um, all good stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a bunch of them. So uh, we appreciate you sharing that. If you guys will listen to this, add, add several of those to your reading list because it's definitely worth it. Oh yeah. Well, James, as we start kind of rounding out the podcast here, I just want to say we appreciate all the time that you've given us, uh, it's been uh, valuable and I know other people are going to take away uh, a lot from it. So uh, one of the questions we normally ask our uh, past guests is we have a CRE treasure chest, which is a repository of items such as PDFs or eBooks or case studies that they often give us uh, that we give out. Um, and so our question is, is uh, what are you willing to contribute today? Um, well, the simplest thing would be to Go to my website and see my podcasts. Uh, I'm sorry, not my podcast, my mm-hmm. blog postings. Um, my website is best1031online.com. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that's my specialty now is uh, helping people that are in their senior years that have owned their properties for multiple decades, help them get the most uh, uh equity for their property, highest dollar for their property, and then help them exchange. I have the SVN platform that allows me to transact in all 50 states. Mm -hmm. And I've built a very nice model with the relationships that I have with the regional and national single tenant net lease brokers all over the country. Um, I'm doing transactions all over the country because a lot of these people in California are exchanging outside of California to get greater yields. Um, it's since 2018, that's been my new focus uh, is really 1031 education. Pardon me. Um, so as time goes on, I'm getting ready to launch a YouTube channel. It's called 1031 Rules. Um, nice. But there's a lot of resources there on my website. That's awesome. No, and we'll, we'll include a link to your website in the description as well so people can gain access to it. And we'll include it in the treasure chest so you, you guys can check out his blog posts and 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 see what, uh, you know, he's been able to provide on that website. As far as, you know, p- people wanting to get in contact with you, let's say they're, they're owners that, that fit that description that want to do business with you as far as, you know, doing 1030 exchanges or, you know, maybe they're, you know, brokers that are wanting to just ha- to have a conversation about, you know, ask questions or whatever else. What's the best way to do that? Um, well, my email is james.bean at svn.com. Again, for the agents that want to go to my website, there's a agent um, registration in the top right-hand corner of the homepage. It says agents click here. That'll take you to a registration page where I'll get all your contact information. Uh, if you have clients that, you know, are needing to do a 1031 exchange, but you have never done one. I offer referral fees from 30 to 50%, depending on the situation. 
Uh, that's one of the things that I've also become known as a broker's resource is a lot of listing brokers will in their prospecting efforts, they'll be calling owners and the owners will say, Hey, uh, Raphael, I'd love to sell my property, but I don't have anything to exchange into. Or many older people think that they own their apartment. They have to exchange in an apartment, which is not the case. Like kind doesn't mean you have to exchange into the exact same type of property. So I'm out there to be a resource for the brokers that really want to use that. They can reach me on all my social channels. Um, I'm at 1031 Broker James on all social channels, and you can reach me there as well. That's awesome. No, and, and I, you. I encourage you guys to take advantage of that, uh, to reach out to James. And, you know, if you guys have an opportunity that fits that description with an owner that you're representing, please do reach out. I think James would be a phenomenal resource for you, you all, and we'll include that in the description as well. So. James, again, thank you so much for your time. It's really been a, a great time and an honor to get to have a conversation with you and reconnect after a little while of not not seeing each other. But I'm I'm thankful we're able to do this. Uh, for those of you guys who are listening to this in a podcast format, we would greatly appreciate it if you could leave a five star review. It's made a huge impact in our in our ability to reach a broader audience, and we've seen a significant uptick in our downloads as a result of that. Along with that, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. It makes a huge impact, and we've we've increased our reach significantly as a result of you guys doing so. So thanks again so much for tuning in, and we'll see you all next time.